Gentlemen, I'm not color like you boys. I'm a different type. Yes, sir. What type of peacock Uncle Thomas sound like statement was that? Who does he? Does that high saluting baboon think he is putting us down? Hold on, fellas. You both need to get your hands out of your horse cans. What he meant is that he is the only colored general in the U.S. military. See, do up. I told you you shouldn't judge every book by its cover. What a bunch of rhubarb. Uh, my grandfather, on several occasions, recalled to me the story of how he got to meet General Benjamin Davis Sr., the first black general in U.S. military history. In 1940, General Davis was appointed Brigadier General of the U.S. Army by U.S. President Franklin Roosevelt. The appointment was considered an unpopular move by many in the U.S. and created a lot of political and social protests and controversy for many white Americans. However, to many black Americans, like my U.S. Southern born and bred and raised grandfather, they saw General Davis as a source of pride and inspiration. A miracle who was a beautifully formed rose that grew out of the seemingly impenetrable concrete of the United States, a.k.a. Jim Crow racism, inequality, and segregation. General Davis was Colin Powell before there was a General Powell. Before General Davis was made a general, he oversaw the New York 15th National Guard unit in Harlem during the 1930s. The New York 15th National Guard unit by that time was known by its legendary nickname, the Harlem Hellfighters, a name given to the original members of the unit by the French because they served bravely, proudly, and fought ferociously in World War I never losing an inch of ground or fellow soldier to enemy capture. A native of Washington, D.C., General Davis was a career soldier's soldier, serving his country honorably and with distinction for several decades at home and abroad. General Davis had a son named Benjamin Davis, Jr., and like his namesake, he was an exception to the rule as well. Benjamin Davis Jr. was just the fourth black graduate of West Point and the first black graduate of the 20th century. He went on to command the elite Tuskegee Airmen, a legendary all-black airplane fighter escort squadron during World War II. Following in his father's enormous footsteps, Davis Jr. became General Davis Jr., the second black in U.S. military history and the first black general in U.S. Air Force military history. I guess greatness must have been in the genes. One day, General Davis Sr. came to a base my grandfather was stationed at to review the troops. My grandfather and others like him must have gotten a thrill out of seeing white folks, especially racist ones, salute a color or black man because he was considered their superior and therefore they were required by military law to treat him as such and even call him sir. You must remember this was a uh, amazing considering the fact that it was normal and accepted for a black man to be called a boy in American society at that time regardless of his age or accomplishments. When he made his way to the black troops he told them without hesitation that he wasn't colored like them, and that he was a different type of colored. No one said a word when he was expecting them, but when he left, many of the black soldiers that were present during his talk were visibly upset and angry that he would say what they considered to be a very detrimental and hurtful remark. A few were even calling General Davis a sellout and a Uncle Tom. However, some of the soldiers who were a little bit quicker on their feet in terms of wit reasoned with the others that maybe 
what the general meant was that he was the only colored or black general in the U.S. Armed Forces, which in turn made him a different type of colored man, meaning one who had greater military rank and authority. Many, not all, black soldiers accepted this interpretation of the comet and once again put General Davis back on his hero worship pedal. Lesson. Look beyond the words. Try to read what wasn't said instead of what was said.